Okay, here we are for our word problem of the day. So go ahead and get your white words ready. And today what we're going to do is, again, we're going to be comparing two things. So what I want us to do is I want us to draw a line right down the middle of our page because we're going to be comparing two different things. But what I want you to do is I want you to make a tens and ones frame on either side. So it's going to look a little something like this. Once you have that done, we'll get started. Here's our word problem. Ari has four dimes. Violet has four pennies. Ari says, we have the same amount of money. Is he correct? Well, let's think about it. How much is a dime worth? How much is a penny worth? And what we need to think about is, are they worth the same amount? Just because one has four coins and the other has four coins, does it mean that they have the same amount? Let's check it out. So what we're going to do on the bottom portion underneath the tens and ones frame is we're going to draw. So this is Ari, so we're going to put Ari's name up on top. And then this is Violet, so we're going to put Violet's name over here. So we know who we're talking about. So Ari had four dimes. Now I'm going to draw my four dimes here. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to put a D in the middle of those so I know that they're dimes. Now, how much is a dime worth? If you said 10 cents, you're absolutely correct. So what I want to do is I'm going to put a 10 under this one, a 10 under this one, a 10 under this one, and a 10 under this one. So I know I now have how many 10s? One, two, three, four. I have four tenths. So I can do this a couple of different ways. I can count by tens four times. Let's do that. 10, 20, 30, 40. So I think Ari has 40 cents. And I can prove that by just filling in my tens in ones frame. How many tens do I have? Well, we just counted. We have four tens. And does he have any ones? Does he have any pennies? No, he doesn't. So that's going to be a zero. So I think Ari has 40 cents. Now we need to see how much Violet has. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw Violet's pennies. Her pennies are going to be down here just like Ari's dimes were. So she had four pennies. And we're going to label these P for pennies. Now what we need to think about is how much is a penny worth? And I think you all know a penny is worth one cent. So we're going to put a one underneath each one of these, okay? Now, are we counting by tens or are we counting by ones? That's right, we're counting by ones. So let's count it. One, two, three, four. So I think she has four cents, but let's check it by filling in our tens and ones frame. How many tens does she have? That's right, she doesn't have any. So we don't have any tens here. And I'm just gonna put a zero there. You could just leave it blank, it's up to you. How many ones does she have? That's right, she has four ones. So in looking at this, like I said, if I cover up that zero, it looks like she has four cents. Now, who has more money? They both have four coins, but how much is the value of those coins? Ari has 40 cents, Violet has four cents. Which one is bigger? Which one is greater? That's right. Ari's 40 cents is the greater amount. And the way I can tell is, again, like I said yesterday, we're going to look at the digit that's in the tens spot because we read from left to right. So that's a four in the tens spot for him, but a zero here. We know four is bigger than zero, so we know that the 40 is going to be bigger than the four. So if you said to answer our question, is he correct? The answer is no, he's not correct, because Ari has more money than Violet. For our counting today, we're going to do something called beep counting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start counting, and when I say beep, you need to fill in the blank. So 
we're going to be doing ones and tens. So we'll be counting by ones and we'll be counting by tens. We could be counting forward, we could be counting backwards. You don't know, you gotta listen. So here's an example. If I said one, two, three, beep, that's right, four would come next. And that's pretty easy, right? What if I said 10, two, 10, three, 10, four, 10, five, beep, that's right, 10, six comes next. So here we go. I'm gonna start by just doing ones, okay? Let's start with um, 10, three, ready? 10, three, 10, four, 10, five, 10, six, beep. Good, if you got 10, seven, you're right. Now let's get a little trickier. Now I'm gonna do three, 10, one, three, 10, two, three, 10, three, three, 10, four, beep. Good, three, 10, five. One number is three, 10, five. 35, good job. Now let's do a little backwards counting. Gets a little tricky. Okay, we're again still doing ones. So we're gonna go 10, eight, 10, seven, 10, six, 10, five, beep. What'd you get? That's right, 10, four. So now we're gonna do ones again. We'll make it easy. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, beep. Four, good job. Now, let's do some tens because we've been doing a lot with adding and subtracting tens. So, what, let's start with 10 and we'll just count on. Ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, beep. Good, 50. How about 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, beep. Ah, I got tricky on you, didn't I? If you said 120, you're correct. How about 150, 160, 170, 180, beep. Good job, I can't trick you today, 190. Now, what if I got really tricky on you and I said 1, 11, 21, 31, 41, Beep. That's right, 51 is the answer. Now, if you had a hundreds chart in front of you, it would be super easy for you to look at because I want you to have that visual in your mind of what the hundreds chart looks like and all the columns that go with it. And tomorrow we're gonna to be doing some work with that. So, again, let's do some tens again. We're gonna start this time with um, 33, ready? So 33, 43, 53, 63, beep, good, 73. Now let's see if we can go backwards a little bit. Ready? 90, 80, 70, 60, beep, 50, good job. And here's our last one, ready? 40, 30, 20, 10, beep, zero's the answer. Great job today. Hold on for our lesson. Ready for lesson number seven. Today we're gonna to be looking at two words, greater and fewer. So as we take a look, greater means bigger, larger, and in some cases more. So for example, if I looked at the two numbers 18 and 28, I know that 28 is my bigger number. So I can say it's the greater number. Where the opposite is fewer. Fewer means smaller or less. So I look at the same numbers and I know 18 is less than 28 is. So let's look at our example from our word problem. We know that Ari had 40 cents and we know that Violet had four cents. So I can say that Ari's amount was greater than Violet's and I can say Violet had fewer cents than Ari did. So the way I can prove that is by looking at our tens, okay? So there's four tens here, there's zero tens here. So I know that, that is, this is gonna be the bigger number. Now, what happens if these tens were the same? Well, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the next digit, which is gonna be your ones. And that's gonna tell you which one is greater, and that's gonna tell you which one is fewer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start practicing using some different numbers. And I want you to decide what is the greater number 
and then what one is fewer. So we're going to start off with these two numbers and tell me what you think. So I have the number 5 and I have the number 12. What is the greater number? That's right, 12 is the greater number. Now, if you take a look, are there any 10s here? No, there's not. So we have to imagine that's a zero there and a one here. And we know one is bigger than zero. So 12 is going to be our bigger number. All right, let's take a look at our next, next set of numbers. Here we go. We have the number 39 and then we have the number 21. Which one, now here's my question, which one is fewer? So I didn't say greater, so we're looking for the smaller number. Which one is less? That's right, 21 is less. And how did you know? That's right, if you said that I have two tens and I have three tens, I know two is smaller than three. Great job, let's do another. How about 23? Now this is where they're gonna try to trick you. And 32. You'll get tricked sometimes because your brain is working so quick that you just see two and three, and three and two, and you think it's the same. So a lot of times you'll say, oh, those are the same numbers. No, they're not. Take a good, close look. Again, let's look at our tens. I have two tens here, and I have three tens here. So my question is, what is the greater number? If you said 32, you'd be absolutely right. Let's take a look at another set. So this time it's gonna be tricky. I have 17 and then I have 15. Which one is the greater number? Now, like I told you before, sometimes our tens are exactly the same. So if they're exactly the same, what did I tell you to do? Good, go on to the ones. So I have seven ones here and five ones there. So which one is the greater number? 17 is the greater number over 15. So I could say 17 is greater than 15. The opposite way I could say 15 is less than 17. Or I have fewer over here than I do here. What if I give you one ten and nine ones? So there's one ten and nine ones, or two tens and one one. And sometimes it's gonna be giving them to you in words instead of numbers. And if it does that, what you need to do is actually write the number above the words. It makes it easier for you to stay organized and understand what numbers you're looking at. So I have the number 19 and I have the number 21. Again, if I follow along, I have one ten and two tens. So which one is gonna be my greater number? That's right, 21 is the greater number. And the last one we're gonna look at before we go on to what your homework is going to be for tonight, we have 31 and 13. So again, what they're going to do is give you three tens and one one, or one ten and three ones. Do not get confused, make sure you're reading, make sure that you're recording the numbers correctly. So three tens compared to one ten. So 31 is gonna be greater than 13. Make sure you're reading it properly. That's the most important thing you can do. Now, your homework for tonight. So, what you're gonna be working on is your workbook page 24 and 25. We're gonna do number 24, we're gonna do the first problem on 24, and then we're gonna do the first problem on 25. So I wanna show you how you're going to do it. Now, if we take a look at page 24, they're looking for greater. Which one is greater? So they're gonna give you two pictures like they did here. So they have a necklace with 10 and then some ones and then another necklace with 10s and some ones. So this is what I want you to do. I always want you to circle your 10s so that you know what you're dealing with. So in this case, I have one group of 10 here. So I'm gonna write my number 110 and then I have three ones. And over here I have a 10 here. So I have one 10 and I have nine ones. 
So if I look at those two numbers, I know I have ones in the tens place for both of them. So I have to look at my ones. I have three ones here and nine ones here. That means that this is my greater number. So that's how you're going to do page 24. 25 is a little trickier. So 25, the top portion isn't going to be too bad. So again, they're giving you the exact picture. So again, you're going to circle your groups of 10. So I have one group of 10 and three ones again. You're going to circle your 10s. I have one group of 10 and nine ones. What it's asking you is though, what is the item that has the fewest? Which one is fewer? Meaning less. So now this time you're going to be circling that one. Okay. Now, as you get going down to the bottom of your workbook, you're going to see here that it gives you those words again. The best thing that you can do, like I said earlier, is to write the number pretty small right above it so you know what numbers you're dealing with. Please make sure you send me your work, send your teachers your work, and if you have any problems, let us know.